So, honestly, at the stream yesterday, I played more Master Duel on PC. So I was like just playing around on PC, getting used to the game and getting used to the bearings and things like that. And so far, I'm really liking this game. It basically feels like it combined Duel Links with the style of Magic the Gathering and just traditional Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and I feel like right now, if you're into Yu-Gi-Oh, you need to be playing Master Duel because there's so much free content in this game that's going to be very monetized. Yu-Gi-Oh itself is a very monetized product. And people are always going to be like, oh, Yu-Gi-Oh's pay to win. Yes, it's always been that way. So if you don't want to spend a shit ton of money on this game right now, this is a free to play game. Then right now is the best time to play because they give you so many free gems. Like I was getting... Just doing a story mode, you get a shit ton of gems. Doing all the challenges, you get a shit ton of gems. This game is constantly giving you free stuff, which is something that Doinks also did, and you need to take advantage of that. So if you into Yu-Gi-Oh, you on all platforms, the platform you on, you can be playing Master Duel and getting these free duels done. You know, getting these free gems. It, it doesn't matter what it is that you want to do. You can build whatever deck. These story mode duels are fairly easy. You can use a base starter deck and, and get right through it, but like they give you a shit ton of freaking gems. Like not only that, you get free cards for doing most of these, and the practices up here give you 600 gems each. So do you need to play Master Duel? This game is like really good. Like there's a lot about Master Duel that I really enjoy, and one of the things I didn't notice last night while playing doing it on stream was the card crafting system where you can like craft cards. It's kind of expensive with the craft cards, not like real money wise, but like the end. If you ever play Duel Links, you can just, you can just, just, you can sell cards to the current trader in order to get like, you know, rare tokens, ultra tokens, normal tokens, things like that. You do that too in this game. And so like, if you get like 30 ultra rare tokens, you can make an ultra rare card. And that is amazing. Cause that basically just means if there's a deck you want to build, you can just mantle some stuff and then just build, you know, craft that, those cards for that deck and just get whatever the fuck you want. And I've done that. Like I've started building um, my Burning Abyss deck on PC by just crafting Burning Abyss cards since I don't, since I haven't unlocked a Burning Abyss, you know, pack yet. So there's so much you can do with this game and there's so much good about it and I really like it. This one's gonna show you how to link summon. I do like that. Like I know how to do all this shit, but if you're new to Yu-Gi-Oh or if you haven't played in like forever, these practice little loner decks, they, they do a good enough job to explain to you how to freaking play the newer formats or the newer cards in general. So I say like your last time playing Yu-Gi-Oh, the only like cards for, the extra, for like your extra deck was just like freaking fusions and like and that's it. It's like you missed out on XZs and synchros and links and pendulums. All right. So let's say you want to build Burning Abyss. We got setting five credits for ultra rares. We can just go ahead and then make Beatrice for 30. You never and it comes like Beatrice. You never run one Beatrice in the burning this deck. That's all you really need. So like now you're good. You now you have one of your boss bouncers without ever having to like to like care. And then since I have an extra, just go ahead and make Dante. You usually want to run three Dante, so you're gonna need two more of those. And also when you do when you craft stuff, you you end up making um secret keys, which will allow you to like actually go build like the deck. You can go. It gives you a free like. It gives you the, the the secret packs for free, so you can go out and try to like, get pulls of that of that deck. So it's another way to just like try to find cards. I even bought the freaking battle pass that they have because basically, like again, this game gives you so many free gems. Basically, the first battle pass of this game is freaking free because you can. It costs you. They give it, it costs six hundred gems to get the, the gold pass. They give you so many gems that you and that you can just use that free six hundred to give from like one of the the, the little practice duels. And then buy the gold pass and then the gold pass itself when you complete it gives you another 600 gems so basically you make that back there's a lot of value to this game so far we finally have a brand new Yu-Gi-Oh game to play master duel has been you know one of the games that I was looking be looking forward to for a while so ever since they, they announced like mass master duel and rush duel i think there's another one too i forgot but um this game is out and i i have very mixed opinions about it um you know, when I first was playing it, I was going through that honeymoon phase of, you know, just a new game being out, especially when it comes to, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, especially because, like, it, it's very rare for them to release, you know, games that are across all platforms. You know, we rarely get these style of Yu-Gi-Oh! games. You know, the last one they had was Link's Evolution, and if you saw my review for that, I didn't like it because it was basically a freaking DLC for the, for the previous Yu-Gi-Oh! game, those were consoles. 
but I'm usually comes to Yu-Gi-Oh as a whole on on in, in gaming. Third party apps are used to you know play Yu-Gi-Oh like Dueling Book for example. So this is Konami basically going into that market of you don't need to play Dueling Book. You need to play the idiot sites that are like that. Just play Master Duel. You know, and so far at its core, it is a very good game. At its core, it's a very solid Yu-Gi-Oh experience. You see all the things that you can do with it. You know, everything about it so far is good. But that's not, you know, just because there's a lot of good things doesn't mean it, that it's all perfect because it isn't. For example, Konami, you really need to lower how much time people get for their turns. These duels can be taken so long. It's because people can just take forever on their freaking turns. And that's not good. You need to, to like, I'm not saying it has to be like freaking you get two minutes a turn. But it needs to be lower. Because you can ruin fun factor by, you know, someone just taking freaking, you know, six minutes for, for like one turn every single time it's their freaking turn and like it's turn three and you've already been, you've already been doing it for almost freaking 20 minutes and you're like yo this is just taking so long i'm getting bored i don't want to play anymore that's what happens when these duels take so long people lose interest in playing you don't want people to lose interest in your brand new game you need to to, to change up the time and the other issue i'd say exists in the, in the game is the game crashes a lot especially on on, on console um i've had games crash on me in the middle of, of rank duels which consoles are lost automatically so i've gotten free losses through the game crashing gotta fix that um i think solo mode is a solid tutorial mode it's basically all it is it's a tutorial it forces you to play the, the decks that are that are in it which i guess you know it helps you learn which decks you want to use if you're new to the game but I would also would much rather than there, there be an actual, you know, story mode to the game as well. You know, just like how Duel Links has, you know, the, the duels you play against, you know, Yugi and all, all of them. And you go along, you know, these events that come out like the Declan event where you can unlock, you know, Declan cards through playing his Declan, things like that. And it's just a, a, a true to, to series uh, story mode, you know, like you have in Endless Evolution. You can have that in this game as well. It will also serve as a tutorial and just something people to do while they're not playing in ranked duels. But outside of that, like solo mode, other issue is the the scale on difficulty jumps up in, in solo mode. Like when you're first doing solo mode, it all seems like OK until you get towards the end of it, then it just scales up. And the issue with that is the decks aren't consistent and don't usually make sense. Like you'll you these you don't make your own decks um, when it comes to the loner deck portions of solo mode. So you're using these decks that you don't know anything about. You don't even know how to play it. You never played, played it before. You knew the game, so you don't you you definitely don't don't know how these decks work. So you, you have the whatever the loner deck is, and they throw a bunch of random ass cards just to be different. And you're 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 only drawing just those random ass cards and not the actual like main no component of the main deck of the loner deck or that solo mode event like but mate you're playing like mega list you're not even getting mega cards and it's like but the computer who you're playing against who's freaking also using user, user mega list is getting nothing but mega list cards so it's like the scale for difficulty jumps up and it's gonna be a little rough for newer players but outside of that um i just think it's, it's not bad i think it's pretty good you know i'm a Yu-Gi-Oh fan i've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh since the card game first came out i'm that old you know i've watched all the series other than Varane's. I need to get to watching Varane's. But um, I think it's good. I think I think it's solid, you know, so far. You know, if I had to give it a score, it'd be like a, a seven and a half out of ten. You know, there's obviously some some issues there. It is a, a very bare minimum video game. You know, you're not gonna give a game like this ever a nine out of ten. You're never gonna give a game like this like anything like that, because this is just it's a bare minimum video game. You know, there's not a lot of content there. It's just a card game. Yeah, you know, it's nothing special. It, it it it's clear that they were inspired by Match the Gathering. And if you want to watch me play um, Master Duel on Twitch, I do stream every Monday through Thursday, three p.m. Eastern, seven p.m. Eastern. And link to my Twitch on screen right now, as well as in in the description box. Every video is in the description box. Right now, we're, we're playing like an hour of Master Duel, and then we play um, Halo. Or we're playing through the Halo franchise. And that's not really what this video is about. So we're not going to talk about you know Halo. I'm gonna enjoy myself. I think that's like the most important thing when it comes to a video game is are you enjoying yourself? I'm enjoying myself. You can watch my, my streams. 
usually i'm enjoying myself unless i'm in one of those boring ass duels where the person i'm dueling against freaking net deck so they're reading their cards every single card they draw every card in their hand every card they play every card in an extra deck and then they do the exact same thing in the next turn because they don't know how their deck works and i don't have anything against net decking i think for the most part everyone does it to a degree but usually people who net deck who are you know experienced players they research their cards they play enough duels you know in solo mode tutorial or against their own friends to where they learn the decks so when they go into a competitive environment they know what their cards do and vice versa you, you don't freaking you know get into these duels where it's taking a hundred years for one turn to go by because people are just reading their their, their their cards they don't know what the hell their cards do they don't know what the hell their decks do i've seen a lot of people freaking misplay it seem like he would just sitting there and read 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 and then they get their entire board of white because i know what i'm doing and then they they, they they scoop so i don't have any issue with net decking but this is more so an issue with the whole there's too much time on the clock so let's get to some tutorial duels. I'll also maybe throw in some, some rank plays as well. I want to give you guys another look at how crafting in a game works. I want to do like a full crafting thing, but just like a little small tutorial for those who, who like need a little bit of extra help on how to craft in this in this game. So these are like my you know decks that I'm currently building, you know, Divine Comedy and Burning Abyss. My basically thrown together pendulum deck that I'm using until I can have my skyscrapers and, and Edmund freaking decks um, built. So it's my Volca Shadows. These are like my actual competitive skyscrapers. Uh, these are like just the ones I'm, I'm going to be using, you know, until they add other supports to the other cards to the game that will make it even better. But uh, let's just, you know, go here. Usually, people like to play heroes. So let's just throw that in there. So one of the most commonly given advice in this game is find a deck, build that one deck, focus on that one deck, craft that one deck, use your gems on that one deck. If you're new to this game, you're just now turning it on, you're just now installing it. Don't like just buy a bunch of freaking packs. Focus on one deck you want to build. So again, let's say you're building heroes. The first thing you do, you try to find, you know, a secret rare, not anything else, a secret rare that you want to like put in your deck. So let's say you're playing malicious then you will you would generate a malicious you don't have enough um sr well, crafting material you make some how do you do that well you you come over here you type in your sr do that um yeah you can do num numbers owned so for not to have heroes so then you can just look at cards that you don't want what would you not want that you're not going to use? Like, there's going to be a lot of cards in the game, a lot of staples that are usable later on. But at this exact moment for your first deck, you don't need all the fucking cards. So what aren't you going to use? Click on what you're not going to use. Dismantle that. You know, dismantle any other ones that you that you don't plan on using. I plan on using freaking some of these cards. I'm not going to like get rid of all of them. But just to show you some an example. Um... Now I have 40. So if I want to make malicious, I'll make malicious. And then once you do that, you'll get a um, secret key. When you have your secret key, you go to your secret packs. And then you start like actually opening those with your gems. And you just open up that one pack until you basically have all the cards you want or until you have a full enough deck where you'll you just start crafting up individual cards that you need. But we're gonna open this one because just because it's a free pool. And this is why the dual pass is actually good for you to get. Like when you do the dual pass, you're getting crafting materials. You're not just getting gems. Gems are important, but you're also getting materials. You're getting URs, you're getting SRs, you're getting rares, you're getting all the crafting materials. So if you're and you, you you get, you know, upgrades or dual pass by just doing, you know, regular duels, um PvP duels. You don't get for solo duels. So basically playing against other players will get your battle pass up. And that just gives you more and more resources to go out there and make the decks. And you're you doing make. all this stuff that equals you get your lifetime missions done, you get unlimited missions done, which equals more gems, more materials, more cards that you can focus on building the exactly what deck you want. Cash in on this opportunity to get as many of your decks built, especially when it comes to like a main deck built, for free. You know, you can't spend money in this game. 
but right now there's so many free resources in this game where you can build competitive good meta decks for free take advantage of that because konami isn't going to always allow people to just make free shit they're going to want to make money off this game and this all this stuff has free now it's only going to be free for now maybe they'll add another more free things along the lines when it comes to like adding new cars to the game but right now just take advantage of what so with all of that said, as this is for this review, thank you for watching. Well, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Don't forget, follow me on Twitch. Links have on screen right now. And it's us go talk about below. Me, you guys are the Archangel. Then let's go talent the game on the side. The Biblical Beast. Get you guys on the next one. You'll be safe. You guys want to be your boy. Deuces.